Hello and welcome to the Counterpoint Podcast. All hail the prophetic Wilbur and his almighty engine. I'm Brendan, here with Luke. Eat. And Jonathan. That's me. We're talking about Snowpiercer. Uh, so once again, before we get into it, just a short and sweet. Luke, did you like this movie? I did. I did like this movie. Jonathan, did you like this movie? I did not. I thought it was just a bad movie. Interesting. I hate that you said that after you liked Tenet. Um, I like this movie. What? Yeah. <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, I like this movie. I've seen it three you times. Like this, you yeah, like this, this movie this... better than Tenet? I yes. wanted to go back and watch it again, honestly. Are you kidding oh me? Of course. This movie's absolutely better than Tenet. Oh, I do not agree. It is that's, significantly better than Tenet. Crazy. Crazy. Out of your mind. So we have so much to talk about now because that's crazy. <laughs> I don't. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, right from the jump, the characters are characters, and that's nice. I disagree. The characters are caricatures. I think it depends on the character. I of think course, all the of them are like supporting cast. I think. I uh, think that it's crazy because all right, you know, I'll let you. I'll let you go. What were you saying? I I, I think, think the supporting cast is eh. yeah. Yeah, the supporting you know, cast is it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But uh, everybody, you brought up last time about um, being told not shown. I hated how on the nose this. Thing yeah. Was. So there is one I'm scene that's. A leader. I'm not a leader. <laughs> I don't want to be a leader. He's leading the entire time. There's so many okay. characters are almost explicitly just kind of, they have one thing. Yeah, I'm not trying to say this movie was artistic or anything. Sure, sure, sure. But to me, this movie was fucking ridiculous. And yeah. it was fun to watch. Yeah, it's very, like, it's I very like, can't be off the rails. Yeah, it was. It had ideas. Um, I'm not sure so the, the leader thing, I don't mind as much because it's him struggling with his past, which leads into what is yeah. my least favorite scene in the movie, because it is the ultimate tell not show where he's sitting down talking to, um, I, I forget the character's name. Um, the, yeah, but, the engineer uh, guy. And he's just, he's just offloading all this stuff. And like, it's not terrible, but it's like, it's pretty bad. I don't like that scene that much. Yeah. Well, that makes me feel better that you, that you said that. Just but I actually, I do like the fact that it, builds into his character. No, no, as... it's great. The way they do his characterization, I think, is good. I just but I also think I, I liked that they told you that instead of instead of showed you it, because I don't think... I think it would have been way it. better if at any point somebody asked him what to do, and he was like, I, I, I don't know. And then, like, he... he I, I think a better way to characterize that would be to show that he knew what to do, but didn't want to say what to do. <clears throat> his risk but never did that happen he was always like i know what to do i'm gonna say what to do well the thing is, is like, for him he's he's not seeing it as leading people he just wants revenge that's his sure impetus. but he is leading people and it, and also nobody even talks like that ever like nobody's yeah, like you no. are the leader i mean like, most movie most movie if, um scripts no one talks like at all at, at any like, there are very, very few movies where I'd be like, oh, that's like how regular people talk. Like, I remember yeah. one of the few movies is probably super bad where I was like, that's pretty accurate to how, like. I but, like, uh, oh, good. what was I about to say? Uh, da, da, da. Um, oh, no. <laughs> cut this out if you leave this in. Oh, I had something to say. Cut this out if you leave this in. Yeah. Um. <laughs> He no, leave this in if you but, leave this so in. the whole leader thing I think is part of his character in that people look up to him. He doesn't want to be, even if he acknowledges that he kind of is the de facto leader here. Oh, this is what I was gonna say. Because he never way to do he wants to he wants to burn the fucker down. He yeah. doesn't wanna Sure, just, but a better yeah. way to do it would be to have somebody who also wants to be a leader and then then he could still be leading and then just be like, No, 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 just they're the leader, I don't care. That would be a way better way to characterize that. Uh, in terms of what you actually see rather than people just going like you're our leader and it's like nobody really cares if you if you listen to him anyways that is basically be like he's basically basically what i'm getting at is they're trying to make a big deal about something that i one i don't think people ever would in a way that they would never do and then two they're trying to pass it off as characterization i don't think that that's characterization 
I, I don't yeah, think the character so the characterization isn't in him not wanting to be a leader. It's it's him struggling with his past. Is the yeah, it has nothing to do with him being a leader. I do think they dwelled on it a little too they long. They do. Obviously, Jonathan. Well, I'm Lee, saying, I'm saying, I'm saying they're, trying, they're trying to make that uh, like a part of his characterization, and I just think that that's I don't weak. think so. I think also, it's just struggling with his past only comes up like very late in the film. But that's the that's what and, makes and it I, good. It's the fact that it doesn't just only come up though, because there's all there's so much emphasis on like the arms and. Gillian. Like, it's all being set up, even if we don't know it. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's there, and it's... You no, know, and I, I can... But again, I, I gotta say it. Uh, Brennan, you know, and this is something I've learned from Game of Thrones, especially the last season, is uh, hinting at something isn't real character development. But um, I, I do think that the, the movie overall, it handles it well. Um... I remember thinking like, oh, this little brother character is kind of annoying and is probably going to die. Mm-hmm. And then when it happened, I was like, eh. But then at the end, when you find out like Who his is. backstory, mm-hmm. it's pretty sad. Yeah. Um, and you, you're like, oh, shit. I thought it was done in a way that uh, made you feel some type of emotion. Um, and overall, while I thought a lot of it was campy and... You know, frankly, a lot of it I thought was a little trashy, but I loved it. I, I like so it's a fun movie. movie. Yeah, even though it's like dour, it's it's a fun movie. And uh, you know, it, it reminds me of uh, being in, you know, like high school and reading those type of books, like The Giver and shit like that. Mm-hmm. Or in, I guess, The Giver was a uh, late me- elementary or middle school, but either way. Yeah, and I want to be clear. I don't think that the movie was like terrible, and I didn't have like a bad time watching it. I just don't think that it was, um, I don't know anything like amazing. And I just I don't think it was as uh, clever as it thought it was on the writing. Is what I'm kind of getting. Well, at. I mean, it was a book first, right? It was. Is my second I, my second uh, favorite movie based on a French novel? I'm a so little I, surprised. I thought it would have been based on a comic. No, just it's based the way on a French that novel. the way that they were characterized. Interesting. Yeah. Here's the thing, though. The movie as a whole, if we're gonna base it off compared to Tenet, I would never watch Tenet again. I would watch Snowpiercer again. I would not watch this again. I've already seen like what it had to offer. The fight scenes were very boring. No, I think with the reveal at the end, if I watched it again, I would pick up on multiple different yes. things. Yeah. Um, I'm... there's a, there is, especially, uh, even, uh, the revelation that they talk at night, uh, one of the first scenes that you see Gilliam, he's sitting at the back of the train and there's the Wilford symbol behind him and that's, has a phone hidden behind it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I assumed that that was there when they revealed it later, but that, that doesn't make me want to watch it again. You know, what will make you want to watch it again is Nothing. this great YouTube video on, on uh, a YouTube channel called Rhino Stew. That talks about this movie being a sequel to Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> That's fun. It's it, it's honestly it like obviously it's not real. It's such yeah. a great and well thought through video. I could literally talk about this for an hour. Like, uh, they say uh, Wilford is Char- Wilford is Charlie who took um, Willie's name when he passed on. Um, <laughs> He knew that the the chemical was going to cause the freezing because of his love of chemistry, which is shown in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory in the chemistry class. He enjoys that. And then working in the candy factory, learning about chemistry. Um, Wilford says, when the children are manning the engine parts, this part has recently gone extinct because it was the Oompa Loompas running it and they needed hot temperatures to survive. So when the planet froze over, they went extinct. Not only that, but the size, you know, it needs very small... Thing. This is a wild tangent that you're going on. By it's the way. so good, though. It's, it's <laughs> such a great video that everyone should like watch. Um, fantastic! It talks about um, Franco the Elder, the the hitman being Mike TV, obsession <laughs> with uh, television, and violence, and all that. Uh, it's great. I think the question will come down to when did the snow? When did Snowpiercer uh, the book? Come yeah, on? that I don't know. What came out? Hold on. I'm gonna have to look it up. It's called Le 
Transport. Let's see. Yeah, I don't know how to word in French. Um, 1982. So I think Charlie and the Chocolate Factory came out before then. So it would technically make sense <laughs> that it was a sequel. It's great. Um, also, one of my favorite <laughs> one of my favorite lines in the movie is at the very end. The train's blowing up, and Ed Harris is just. Yeah, <laughs> which if you you know his character, I think I think they picked him very well. He yeah. you know it was it's funny because this is pre Westworld. Uh, this is 2013, so yeah, I think so. Westworld was what 2015, 2016, something like that. Yeah, and I think it's very much in a Westworld vein before Westworld came out. And I know there was a Westworld <laughs> movie, but uh, basically. To, to spoil it for you, it's not very good. Mm. And it's not anything like the show at all. Um, it's more like a pre-Jurassic uh, Park. Anyway, back on topic, I thought his performance was fucking excellent. I thought the directing was very good. I mean, I like th- this whole cast is great. But, like, my man Bong, he fucking kills it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, this dude doesn't even speak English as far as I'm concerned. He, he doesn't actually speak English. And he, he made this and he, you know, he must have given like the actors liberty to be able to like do whatever the fuck they want kind of thing. Because one, I mean, like he's not really, well, it also, it wasn't written by him. It was directed by him. No, no, no. Yeah. yeah. But like you have to give this man props because he also did a great sight. Yeah. Like, um, I mean, even even for some of the background cast being pretty like one dimensional, like they got some really great actors, and I think even though the characters aren't the most interesting, I think they're still like fun. Mm, I don't know. A lot of them just kind of annoyed me, just because of how one dimensional they were. Who annoyed you? I mean, uh, Ninja Man annoyed me, like because that was all he was. It's like he was Ninja Man. And then, um, I mean, whatever he he was he never annoyed me a little bit just because there wasn't anything else really going on there. Like, I don't know. Like a lot of the times, it just felt like, why was she, like, why did she go along? Who? The the mom. Well, she was going to find her son. Oh, sure, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, like, Again, so this is sense. this is exactly this is why her character is better than the mom intended because we're shown her caring for her son and protecting and nurturing him and we're shown her strongly wanting to go to find him again not just told like yeah she loves her son and she needs to go get him yeah Yeah. i gotta say that that is true i i don't know jonathan i feel like do you like transformers not really you're not a fan of transformers no are you talking about the Transformers movies or Transformers in general? I do want to say though, uh, it doesn't make sense that that guy's hand froze off in like seven. What was it? Seventeen seconds or whatever? Seven, minutes, seven something minutes. like that. Seven minutes. Well, and then, well, it's a fast uh, moving moving train at a high altitude, and the planet has frozen over. Yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, yeah, but I'm saying like but later that you were in later. Able- they yeah. get out and it's so, fine. Also, they're shooting holes in the train. The and novel Snowpiercer yeah. that happens years, years prior. Uh, uh, so uh, I think slowly it starts to. Turn, so okay, so there's a couple things here. If you're going 500 or 600 miles an hour, or however fast they go, I guess they're not going that fast. Um. So anyway. the window shooting scene, the guards are specifically warning him, like, "Hey, don't do this," and then they're trying to plug up the holes. So it's, yeah, he just doesn't care. But I saw that. They acknowledge but... it as a problem. Um, but also, this movie t- actually takes place at a couple different points of the year. That isn't very well shown. Um, this movie is, it takes a long time. The train has a thousand cars. Um, and that's not really okay. shown in the movie. Yeah, and the other thing you have to think about, I mean... I think that's a bit of a mistake on the movie's part. It, well, it, it is. You but... can kind of tell that they're in Japan when they... Uh, yeah, they talk about the regions that they're in. The, the train goes were, around the were, world. I think well, they, they, like, they said that they had one year that passed, but it wasn't even... You you couldn't even know that a, a, an entire year had passed. But to uh, at the end, you, you could clearly tell they were in, like, Switzerland or the Alps, like... Yeah, but I mean, if it goes there multiple times a year, 
You're just saying that it went at least a year. No, no, I believe the train takes one no, year one, to go one around. One year the world. to go to different exactly. places. So you're yeah. saying, that, oh, look, it went through all these different places, but that isn't showing multiple years. It's just showing one year. No, no, I'm just saying that okay. the movie takes place within a year, but it's longer than it seems. No, I got that. It took place over like a year. I just, I. I didn't think a year would be that big of a difference between your arm freezes over and uh, you're going to well, be fine. Well, they're in a totally yeah. different region. Not only in a totally different region, because obviously that matters, right? You wouldn't be like, well, it's in... Sure. But uh, like the region, didn't they didn't know which region they were in when they blew up the train. They were just like, ah, fuck it. Let's blow up the train. Yeah, the, them blowing the I'm train certain, was ill I'm certain they actually did know where they were because if it was taking place I mean like as far as you're concerned you're right Jonathan because you weren't shown that but I mean like if okay. it takes place over a year and they know when they get to Japan that it's been a year happy new year then I'm sure they know everywhere they go in detail since it's been like what how many years 17 18 years since they got on this thing I don't know about the cabin because the cabin didn't have any windows they yeah on the back I'm windows. sure you're right about the no, back no but the, the engineering guy is the one who planned it not Curtis. Mm -hmm. He's oh, the yeah. one who wanted to blow it up. And he did not live in the back. Yeah, and that's why he didn't know the story about Curtis yeah. being who he was as a person. I kind of imagined not very many people did. No, yeah. I mean, only the back of the train would know. And only, and, and and only people who've been alive for the last 17 years. Right, also only people who were there at that moment, right? Well, the people from the back of the train never leave the back of the train. So anybody who has, who's older yeah, than but, 17... But, I mean, not everybody... Uh, I, I imagine, like... That also know, makes just, sense. Just like with real people, you would kind of go into different groups in the back. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah, but that would make sense why he only befriended younger people, because he literally... Couldn't live like, with his shame. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Of eating babies and shit. But yeah, I, I like the movie. And actually, the first time I saw it, I missed the first 20 minutes of it. Because um, I saw it in theaters. And we were late. And I, I still really liked it, despite not knowing the, the first 20 minutes. Um, and watched it again later. I think it is a good movie. Yeah, I would give it like a... Alright, let's, let's, do, let's do ratings. Jonathan, what would you give it? I'd give it like a four. Going low. Oh, man, you, ten you, a so you gave ten out of six. You, you gave ten out of seven. Didn't you? Well, also this movie was ugly. Like, no, was a a lot of the a lot of the shots, I just was not into. It was not so a very that's, that's visually. Like movie. I think it depends. I think there were a couple scenes that were really pretty, but there's only so much you can do from within a. I mean, you can't say like. I disagree whatever. because I think that there are very bleak I, movies that do a lot of good stuff. So I think that this. The bar scene wasn't very good. The classroom was. Oh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not. No, no, no. I'm not saying it has to look pretty. Like literally, yeah, I'm like, saying I'm like it saying has to. It was very like the sets were amazing. I think there the, were great shots. The, in the, sets, the sets were fine. I just didn't like the shots. I hated the how the action scenes scenes were filmed. I thought that any time that there was a dramatic scene, it was very plain. There was nothing like very creative done with like the lighting or camera work it was all very static it's and very like like that's wild as fuck I, I mean you look at tenant and again the action scenes are all except for the kitchen which is still pretty much just the kitchen i mean i you, did you ever i think i think all the all of the action scenes in tenant were uh they were competently done it was just you're working with something you're working with something new and strange but actually that's what i liked about it is that they were working with something new they were doing something that kind of pushed the boundaries. It may have not worked out as well as they thought. And that's what I said is like, I don't think they leaned into the right, um, into the right things. Like they should have ex focused more on just the explosions and the bullets. Cause anytime there was a fight scene, it just didn't work out. And, uh, yeah. It's that and the fact that the entire time in Tenet, there's literally no, uh, actual, Anytime they do, like, let's say the whole entire war scene, you basically see, like, one enemy guy. And yeah, that's no, that's a mistake. But and it's all in brown. It was... Really, everything is just brown. All the way through the movie, almost, everything is brown. This movie brought a ton of different colors in it. You go through the uh, 
you go through but the, through the you know, fish habitat and it's beautiful. And they also, even though, even though I don't even agree that tenant was brown all the time. I think that that's a little wild, but yeah, it, it, it looked. Are you, oh, yeah, are you saying tenant's brown the whole time? I thought you were saying like just for almost, that last scene. Like, oh, that last scene was 100% brown, but there are plenty of other scenes that are like, oh, it's just brown. I, I, I don't agree I don't with agree that. with that either. I mean, that's, I'm not that even, sailboat I'm not scene is super colorful. I'm not even talking about like a monochromatic like movie because you can have a movie like Blade Runner, but like the camera work is great. I think there were some good shots in this. Movie. I thought there were some amazing shots. Yeah, I cannot think of yeah, a single especially, shot. Especially, especially given amazing. the budget of this movie, you can tell it was made under uh, a lighter budget. Sure, but there are I mean, uh, I mean, lesser, lesser watch, budgeted movies like that Transformers fight, which is why I bring up. Do you like Transformers? Not really. It seems like you like that kind of movie. I don't I mean, like Transformers. Fine, right? I mean, was forty have, million on this movie. Yeah, I mean, you have to you have to factor in this movie literally has a factor of ten, the budget. Sure, I I like low budget movies. And I think, as far as interior, they actually had a lot of exterior shots. Given this movie was one of those like bottle episode type of uh, movies. Yeah. My well, my issue was not with the setting. My issue was just with uh, the shots themselves. I just don't think that that's any like, I can't... shot though. Like you you can't like you can't make. I can't it... think of like a over the shoulder or any time where they had some like perspective down anything. It was always well, hold just on. There's like, a lot of hold on. This is cowboy or like a yeah, just their true. face. Wait, there's absolutely or... perspective. There's okay. So there's a scene watching uh, the little girl walk through the Maybe. aquarium. There's uh, looking from the front of the train down the circle, perfectly watching them in the train engine. Uh, oh, the engine actually. You know what? Never mind. The engine did look nice. Uh, I remember thinking the engine was like when finally. when the back of the train is being counted, it's shot from a far back side. perspective, and the you watch them go down row through. by row. Of, yeah, they're shooting it from yeah, outside of the street. It doesn't look like, I don't know, that's not anything. Famous. But if I had to say, I'd, I'd give this movie an 8 out of 10. Wow. I would, yeah, I would give it like an 8 as well. I really like this movie. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's 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 a movie that I'd watch again, which is not very common for me. And it's a movie that uh, I enjoyed and watched and enjoyed Joyly watched. I don't know, but like it was, it reminded me of like a sci-fi, you know, vibe that I feel like I haven't seen in a while. Especially not seen like usually when I see sci-fi movies like this, the acting is absolutely atrocious, and they picked all good actors. Like literally, all of the actors in this were were pretty fucking good, except for like you said, the Teen Wolf guy. <laughs> But again, I, I don't feel like he was only there for like two minutes. He killed like three people. Teen Wolf guy. Yeah, yeah. Ninja Boy. Ninja Boy. Teen yeah. Wolf. I guess I haven't seen Teen Wolf. So I... Uh, I, I my girlfriend's watching this with me, and she was like, is that the guy from Teen Wolf? So. Interesting. Yeah. That's what I thought. But yeah, I mean... Obviously, you got Chris Evans. Chris Evans. You got Ed Harris. You got John Hurt. John Hurt, fantastic. Um, I'm not like a huge fan of Tilda Swinton, but she is good. Mm-hmm. Um, I've seen Jamie Bell and other stuff, but again, not my biggest. Like, I'm not a fan, but again, he did an excellent job. Octavia Spencer fucking killed it, and also she was great in the help. So like, not really no. germane to this movie, but all right. <laughs> but hey, we like her. She's very expressive. Yeah, I mean, and yeah, those I, are I, yeah, like I said earlier, the cast of this movie is great. Like for a for a forty million dollar budget, the cast is insanely good, and none of the actors are like. I don't know. All except for maybe Chris Evans are like too big that I'm like, eh. I keep thinking like, eh, it's Captain America. Yeah, he gets a bad rap for being Captain America. I like Chris Evans. I think he's good. He's, uh, I don't know, everything I've seen him in, he's done a good job with. 
He's in The Losers, which is a movie I liked, but got fucked because it came out around the and same time as the like, 18. Uh, and Knives Out. He did get yeah, Knives Out. Yeah. He has like a wide range too, because he can play like an absolute fuck, and then he can also play like I'm just your your everyday guy. Here's the thing, though. I feel like most most actors can do that, and then they just get typecast after like the first. So I'm yeah. glad Chris Evans already had some like not Captain America e roles yeah. um, prior to being Captain America. I don't think he'll ever get a not chance to go uh, like for a. Uh, unattractive role though which is a shame because those ones are fun to die give it, into, give like it 30 years. years the dude will no, not be they... attractive for 30 years no but i mean i'm talking like uh like christian bale can do like anything you know what i mean with uh i think they're roles different. Like he... uh, listen chris evans is a great actor but he's, he's not going to be a christian bale yeah but i mean i think a lot of that comes down to well maybe i don't think that chris evans would want to go through the body transformations which are like that's fair even, but I'm just saying, like, I don't think that he'd even be given a role like that. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm totally off here. But no, I liked this movie. Uh, yeah, to me, the visuals weren't perfect. And it's not a movie I would consider like a masterpiece, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's just one of those movies that I liked, which that's, yeah. Yeah, it's a movie I would actually recommend. To like, not like they come to me and they're like, hey, do you like this movie? And I say yes. Like, actively, if someone was, like, looking for something to watch that was this vibe, I would, you know, offer this up to someone, not wait for them to ask me. Hmm. And And it is never that. <laughs> it's true. I would not feel confident like if, if someone came over that i, didn't I don't know i don't i, I don't think like i'd recommend it. Tenet. i only gave it a six but i mean but you gave this you movie gave a this six. a four yeah, i know i think that tenet is better you wild <laughs> did crazy. Not make this movie you know what we need to start doing and i'm just gonna put this in here all right so for tenet what uh jonathan Oh, we're gonna oh, you wanna, keep track. You wanna like keep Oh yeah, I'm it. typing it out right now. Okay. Tenet. So we were four, Tenet. five, six on Tenet. Yeah, so just to get a, a a movie profile for us. Why don't you do it as one message so we can it? <laughs> well, it technically is kind of no it's not. We'll we'll do this better anyway. I can't believe you're doing this while we're recording. Just your very no, loud we're, keyboard we're, slap. We're, we're gonna do this. Can you not hear the motorcycle outside my house? Um then we were four eight eight on <laughs> Snowpiercer. I didn't like the movie. Okay, so I mean, this, five, this is, five this is, is like a, a five is a completely neutral stance. So I didn't hate the movie. I just didn't like it. This is this is a this is funny because last week before you joined Luke, Jonathan and I were talking, and I was like. I wonder how our opinions are going to be on movies. <laughs> and I was like, I think Luke and I kind of have similar opinions on movies. And John, I was like, really? And I'm like, yeah, I don't know if you and I will agree, though. And that's exactly what is happening based on these two movies. You and I mostly yeah. agree, and Jonathan and I... I am, I am the wild. least similar out of, like, us three. That's you know, true. I like the, if we remember the scores and then kind of have, like, a Famitsu thing going on. Famitsu? Yeah, like they they have like four reviewers, I think, in Famitsu, and they give you know one out of ten, and then the final review is like, "This is how good the movie is." Oh, but then you guys are going to be mad because I will always be. <laughs> I, don't think that, I don't think you will always bring a movie down. So if we did a ranked thing based on what we put in, Tenet would be a five, Snowpiercer would be a seven. That seems mostly fair. Yeah, okay. and that, I'm pretty sure as far as IMDb, that's probably like what they actually are. <laughs> Let me see, Tenet. Uh, Snowpiercer is a 7.1 out of 10 on IMDb. Oh, Tenet is a 7.5. Ugh. What are Rotten Tomatoes has to say? Because they're more... Tenet, Tenet looks good and has good ideas. It looks it good, but that's it. <laughs> yeah, it looks good and it... Oh, I thought you bad. said that it looked brown. It, yeah, the, the last shot, uh, or that, that action sequence at the end, the 10-minute the action sequence that's both sides, is horribly boring. Uh, Weakest part of the movie, probably. Both yeah, in action and color and shots and everything's just bad about that scene. Yeah. <laughs> Which is it's it's especially annoying because the the whole thing, uh, at oh, least wow. from what I heard, like the title and stuff, 
it's supposed to be a reference to that scene. It's supposed to be 10 and 10 backwards. Mm. But it's 10 and like, obviously this was a big focal point with you know, the red and blue watches and the patches and everything. Like it was clearly supposed to be an important scene. It's just so fucking boring. We're talking okay, about so, <laughs> so here we go, okay? Rotten Tomatoes gives Tenet a 7 out of 10. Rotten Tomato gives Snowpiercer a 94%. 94, wow. Is that, yeah. hey, well done, is that critic score or fan score? That's critic score. Okay. The audience score has both of them in the 70s. Huh. But uh, I think a lot of that, I don't know. I see a lot of brown in Tenet, though. It's true. <laughs> like, it's just... It reminds me of, like, Fallout 3. In a lot of ways. Even in scenes that, like, should be very colorful, I don't get it. I just get, like, a maze. Look. I don't, I don't know that I... But, so do we yeah. want to jump into, like... Stupid, like little things. I, I have some just like little notes. Sure, yeah. If you've got sure. something, go for it. Yeah, sure. Why did they have a fucking manta ray? Uh, yeah, that is interesting. I, so I think I assume you can eat manta rays. So can you? It, it was probably like there's obviously an air of like you know rich uh, opulence to the the front of the train. So. While it is an ecosystem for food, there also is an element of like this is just our aquarium because we have an well, aquarium. They didn't, they didn't really show that because um, when they, they went to the front, there was like you're shown a little like with the sushi bar, and then like the living conditions are like a little bit better. But that was kind of technically economy. When they made it towards the front, it was like the, everybody was drugged up. That's kind of what I got from that. I mean. That's just like that was the drug train, but there's also like there was like the hair salon and. Um, but that didn't strike me as opulent. That just strikes me as like middle class. In an end of the world scenario where you're on a train with limited resources, having a hair salon would just. Go but if you're trying, somewhere. if you're trying to show that like this end of the world scenario has the most like insane class division. I think that it's important to show an insane class division and show like the front of the train having some wildly stupid opulent stuff. But I mean, they, they have a fucking rave and a drug den and a sushi bar and an aquarium. Right, but the to rave and drug with. den are both like just kind of junky stuff. And then the sushi bar, like I said, was good, but that was technically in okay, but, like junky stuff is uh, expensive when you literally like live in an environment where it's hard to make drugs so like, are you saying that the peak richness is getting super drugged up because there's a couple of homeless people who are fucking rich dude not in this society well chrono Maybe. is not expensive on the train it is literally yeah, but either way like how many people did you see who were high on chrono uh yeah that's true in the back we see very like, low no, chrono use you, in the back. You, see, you see basically i think what they had like two and here's the yeah, thing. But, but they ate fucking bugs. Like, that's all that's they ate. not even that crazy, by the way. Yeah, that is weird that they got so hung up on that. They, yeah, they got pretty into it. I but honestly they, wouldn't. If I found that out, I'd be like, yeah, it makes the sense. only thing. Hold on. But that's the only thing you're fucking eating is just ground up bugs all Maybe. the time. That's Again, fucked it up. it makes sense. No, that's, that's insane as fuck when you consider they're literally having a sushi bar in the front and they're okay, getting fucked so, yeah, but I'm saying yeah, like but, but it, it's like a, the class struggle is like one to fifty. It okay, sure but to trying to say that there's three sections to the train, we really only saw two. We saw the back of the train and then everybody else, which is not as. Do, I think. do we know there's a middle class on the train though? I thought that they said. I thought yeah, it's the second train they go to after uh, after they see the bugs, it's the one where it's just like. Yeah, they, they have a window, and they have, like, right. one yeah. side is the bed. That would be, like, the middle class, and then yeah, everything yeah. is significantly more and more insane. But it doesn't. It doesn't. Like, the moment they get out of the back, it's all the same, and it's all very middle class. I was like, oh, when are they going to get to the end? I wonder what crazy stuff they're going to have. Maybe that's then... because you uh, think you are middle class when, in reality, you are in the 99% of all human beings who have ever existed. I know I'm in the 99% of all, all right, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, I'm saying, what do you like, want them to do? Do you want them to just like all have giant diamonds on their head just to like look like they're 
Like, wh what are they supposed to do? You literally go from, like, a place where all they can do is, like, slum around and, like, hang out and eat dirt. Sure, but, like, instead but, like, of, like, a 90s-style salon, why not have something that was, crazy? That was, like, the third trunk they wanted No, to. that was towards the end. No, yeah, that was later. That was, all, that was like, the cart before the, the drug, like, the rave. No, I think there was a cart in between there. I don't. Yeah, there were there was there was still like the sauna and stuff between there. Oh um, yeah, but see, the sauna was good, but it also wasn't like an opulent sauna. It was like a higher end sauna. So I, I mean, thought we were I think having a it. sauna is opulent. Yeah, sure. But I'm saying like, if you're trying to show like the craziness between it. Yeah, I, I, the I, aquarium I, is pretty fucking insane. Yeah. Like exactly, um, the aquarium again was in. So I'm saying all of the crazy stuff actually happened before the end. Okay, in but, my opinion. but here's the thing: how because the middle class bunking was still before the sushi bar, right? Uh, was, I think it was after. the middle class bunking was literally the room after the bugs. Yeah, right away. Yeah, and then and oh, then what? you get to the aquarium and sushi bar. So how do you know the middle class people were allowed to go that far? Yeah, they could have just like had the bunking and that's it. Maybe, yeah, I guess. Which, by the way, there was no one in the middle class. class. Which, which, by the way, is is uh, an artistic thing that they did on purpose to show you that they have eliminated the middle class. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. No one's even there. Yeah, the, the Snowpiercer, the the leader, Wil, Wil, Wilbur, whatever, Wilford. he has eliminated the, the middle class from existence. Which yeah, is so I was right. The middle class doesn't exist in this movie. Like. Yeah, there is no middle class. There is like catch on that. when did that happen? The bunks are all empty. No they, they literally mentioned, "Hey, there's no one here." And there I was thought no that they, I thought that they evacuated. No, no air. there was you one guy. Seen. Yeah, you would have seen. Him so there was just no middle class. There was one guy who was middle class, and he was doing all the work to feed them. Yeah, Paul, I think his name was. Which is which is artistically saying like the middle class is the one who's actually working to keep the economy going. For all these people to live and the upper class is just like fuck it we're not doing shit for you which is basically what it came down to the only thing they did was rob and rape from the from the lower class basically they came down there to like grab talent and they were like okay if you don't fucking have talent fuck you like okay, oh you okay. can't play the violin eat a dick yeah which was the so it's still i'm all right i'm i still thought it was a wild you know obviously from the back of the train to everything else, but I just didn't catch the. Uh, I mean, the, they definitely could have shown more, but I, I think they shown enough yeah, of I like think, these people had luxuries. Maybe it, it yeah, wasn't the opulence we associate with rich people now, but it was still insane luxury compared to the back of the train. No, uh, I I totally get and agree with that. That's not my point. I, my point was just <laughs> like uh, I thought that they were going for a like a traditional three class structure, I guess. Yeah. And like, I was like, I don't know. I felt like they skipped over that. There was, they make a point to like show you that, Hey, there used to be people on this part of the train. Okay. Like, are the people? That, yeah. The exists, just, but no one's there. And then, um, there was like one transition where they went to like the, the tree, uh, like the orange tree place. Yeah. That, that transition was so bad. I literally made a note of it. I don't know what happened there, but I put a note down because it was just so weird. And we were just kind of just like, oh, and we're here now. All right, cool. I don't know. Um, and then um, that school section was the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, I think that's supposed to just really highlight the fanaticism. Because it's just another way he keeps people in line on the train. So he, yeah, he has the speech about fear and anxiety, but there's also a reverence to keep people in line. Right, and I I get what they were going for, but it just felt very. I, I guess the movie's over the top, but like the whole movie's over the top. But to to bring it back to the kids, like also they were kind of. This is like the thing too. They had kind of a dichotomy. If you're poor, it's because you're a piece of shit, which is basically to say that's basically what they do in public schools. At least at least my public school was basically like that. Like that's kind of how we were taught from where i grew up well i grew up in springfield so we were the the piece of shit school so that I think that's how true. <laughs> springfield is definitely known as the ghetto like, you, could be, you could be in the ghetto you could be this you know, oh it's so much worse what like tps yeah 
Uh, no, we were kind of associated with them, at know, least man. with others. But anyways, um, yeah, I mean, like, I get what they were going for, but, like, constantly it was, like, a weird mix of them trying to be kind of serious and then also switching to, like, over the top i don't know it didn't work for me that school section was just awkward and when they broke out into song i almost shut the movie off and i was like no <laughs> yeah it's definitely just supposed to be over the top but like they totally could have done it in a real way i don't yeah, know but the, the, the movie the has all been over the top that you might like the tv show which is i guess the second season is done now or something i think the first uh, season just finished they got announced for a second season and then my last note is, uh, why were the uh, upper cabin people so okay with the tail train people? If they felt so disgusted by them, why didn't they try to stop them? They don't want like to touch everybody. those dirty homeless people. And also, it's because they were afraid of them. That makes sense. They were afraid of them and had no weapons because they were yeah. never challenged before because they were basically kept um, elevated by a military force that all of a sudden no longer existed. I just don't think that that's, that really makes sense. I mean, that's that's literally what happened in a... You don't think that a, like, a bunch of rich people, if uh, I, or like if somebody, if some homeless person just went into a rich neighborhood that somehow the cops are gone, you don't think that all of the dads would be like, oh, I'm a big man. I'm going to show them up. And then they would like form a game. And even if they got slaughtered. Then, if, like, if the homeless people just killed all the cops? No, no. Well, yeah, maybe, I guess. Do you I think, think they would go would... outside and say, I'm a big man. I can take them on with no weapon after they just killed all the cops? I think people would. That's crazy. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't yeah. think so either. I think the only, the only way you live in that is like in the U.S. just because so many people have guns that, yeah. The thing they kind of go with that from a young age, they were told that, like, these poor people are, you know, dumb as dirt and don't deserve to be there, and now they're there. Like, they would have to have, like, resentment for them. I mean, that's literally what happened in revolutionary France, is that the people from the bottom literally, like, eat the rich. It's, like, from revolutionary France. It happened. Yeah, but you you don't think they that, thought like oh someone think that they fought me. back like they totally fought back. Oh yeah, they the fought, back, but not no not to the bitter end. A oh, lot yeah. of them got arrested right away, and their fucking heads came right the fuck off. Yeah, but they didn't just go like yeah, my head's coming off. Like I don't know, it it just doesn't uh, seem they're literally passing right by them, and nobody's doing anything. They're just like, oh wow, they're there, and that's it. That's just the reaction of like. Are oh. you are you like, let's say, first of all, on the rave train, it makes sense because yeah, no, yeah, yeah they're all fucked up. But let's say the middle class, they were mostly females. If you didn't notice that, and they were all just kind of like worrying about their hair and shit, like in the salon and the um, other one, they're they're not fucking equipped to fight, and they've never had to be equipped to fight. And it's not like in the U.S. where every dad has a fucking AK. Like, yeah, the only times I can think of them walking past, maybe I'm forgetting something, is um, the rave scene, which, you know, they're high in partying. The salon, which it kind of makes sense. They're just blowing it up. And then actually in the botanical section, they say, no, don't touch that. But Tilda Swinton's still there with them. And she's, no, 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 it's fine. They won't bite. And she says yeah. it's okay to them. Right. That one makes sense, but she doesn't stay with them forever. Mm-hmm. They kill her. And then there's plenty more carts because, you know, I, I got that there was more carts than shown. I just wish that they had a scene where they kind of showed, like, what is going on generally with people. And again, a lot of the infighting between the middle and lower class, etc., was engineered, and you find out about that later. Mm-hmm. So do I think it, like, ruins the movie to necessarily like suspend some amount of disbelief. I don't think it does, but I think for Tenet, I could not. And maybe for this movie, you could, you, you know, you, you also couldn't, but for me and Tenet, I couldn't like. Yeah. Suspend yeah, disbelief maybe. for that movie. And then, oh wait, I actually do have one more note. Sorry. Uh, the final villain, his like, his reasons why were kind of lame. Of just friend. like, everybody has their place. It's like, well, well yeah. that's what every single person who's rich, like who's the top dog always thinks. Oh, yeah. Curtis literally says that. He's like, that sounds like someone, what something 
someone who's on top yeah. says to someone. Which yeah, but it, it just, it, I don't okay. think that people actually think like that. Mm, no, it's absolutely true. It's there's there's been so many studies that have basically proven that, like, what was it? There was there was a Monopoly game that they did like studies of that where they put people in rooms and they gave certain people like advantages in the game, mm -hmm. and almost none of them would ever admit. Um, but he's that literally they, crafting. They were it. Well, I I think also part of that is his obsession with his train. He sees everyone as a part on his train that he sure. decides where they go. And it's the same thing with like that. the obsession with the economy or the government. Oh, I got that. But he's also the sole creator. That's like the researchers creating it and then I mean, saying... It, it, was he the sole creator? Do we really know that? Yeah, for sure. He's supposed to be the... Even if he wasn't, it still doesn't make sense to be the not. craft. Like, he's like... Ah uh, yes, their position is to be poor, and I will completely, utterly make their life hell, and that is their place because that was always their place. Well, even I don't though I'm making this not, right now. They're not one. I don't think he cares so much whether or not their lives are hell. I think he just has to be one better than them. Like he has to feel superior, and two, I no, think that would be better. It would be better actually if it was like that. so the vibe i always got and maybe i'm off base here the vibe i always got is so when he set up this train the middle and upper class people are actual ticketers for the original train and the back people are people that just got on because the world was ending and that's why he sees them as lesser yeah. because they aren't patrons of his train they are just resources for him to use because their lives are now his yeah, yeah, now that would be more understandable if that was. That's always how, how I saw it. That's, that's what he says. Like that's, that's not what he says. He says everybody has their place, and it would be way better if he was just like. He literally says you... that, that we were not originally. No, there. no, no. I know. I know that that's how it happened, but that's not the. That's not his reasons why he never says or acts in a way that it's like. He's not like I own you because you should have died out there. So anything that happens to you is better than your death. He doesn't say that. He says everybody has their place. Yeah, Wil Wilford never says it, but that's just that's the vibe I always got. Yeah, it's, it's but I never got that vibe. To me, his vibe was just, uh, this is the way it has to be. And then it just, I don't know, it makes for a weak villain. I don't think he was necessarily super weak, but I don't think he was the strongest villain. But again, I don't think a movie needs uh, super important villain to be like an eight out of ten. yeah I, 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 uh, neither of us gave the movie like a, also for most of the movie he's not really the villain the idea of him is the villain but he, he's not but, present we don't hear yeah, from him for all you know he could have been dead that's what yeah. my that's, yeah i thought he was going to be dead too but that's why it was so disappointing when he was alive and he was weak because i think if you're going to have a villain that's not present and you're going to make them present they should but, be I mean, is, he, either they should be either train a, Cares um, about. Like it should be either a diversion or it should be everything that it was. And to like me, it wasn't everything. If you think about it, I don't think it's that weak though, because in his eyes, he was the only person keeping humanity going. I also think it was great because he's he's very subdued. He's just you know he's cooking a steak. He's relaxing because everything's gone according to plan. Even though the rebellion went further than it should, he has all of his people at gunpoint, ready to kill them to get what he wants anyway. So he's yeah. just like, sure, you're here. Mm -hmm. And maybe you can succeed me now, but you haven't won. Yeah, yeah. but his, his motives. Not, he's destroyed. not a selfish. He's not selfish. He's yeah. He spares just, eighteen people at the end, John. Come on. Yeah. Not only that. Not only does he save eighteen people, <laughs> but uh, he's ready to die. Oh yeah, he doesn't and, care. He's like, I'm old. The train needs to keep going. Yeah. Yeah, like he's again. It's this hyperfixation yeah. on the train. There are good aspects there, but I'm saying that the motivations completely ruined his character for me. I don't because know. His it, motivation it is just, to keep the train going and keep. That's the, one of them. He wants but to also, the train. one of his main like core principles is that everybody just has their place, but it's a place that he created, so it doesn't make sense. That's why he's at the front of the train. Jonathan decides to play because he built the train. He took his chocolate factory the train and he built a train. The train is literally. He just has a circular reasoning, and like nobody really kind of points it out. The train tracks a circle, Jonathan. I mean, they literally. 
So when he when Curtis says that's what the guy at the top would say. Yeah, but he isn't pointing out specifically that it doesn't make sense. He's just saying that it is uh like a Do you think no one has ever been like, hey, that doesn't make any sense. I don't know. Maybe. I don't think it's necessary that you have someone point out that it doesn't make sense. I think it because, I mean that's like most of you know, even in our society, people can point out that it doesn't make sense. It's not gonna change anything to point out like hey sure but i'm just saying it's a weakness of the character well, not yeah but I mean, characters right. can have weaknesses that doesn't make sure not, to do no, no, not like a weakness in that regard i'm talking about it just makes the villain weak in my opinion like it doesn't serve the story well in your opinion yeah. i think it serves a purpose or the story even better All right now i think we're talking sir. um one more thing about the, the last scene did you guys think Claude's voice was really weird? Like it was dubbed over or something? Like when when uh, when he asks her, "Is the number still eighty four percent or whatever?" She literally sounds like a robot when she responds. Mm -hmm. Like I was like, "Is are they gonna reveal that she's a fucking animatronic or something?" Like I don't know what happened there. It might just be me, but all three times I've seen the movie, when she talks, I'm like, "What the fuck is happening here?" I didn't catch that, but also explosions don't work like that. You can't just give somebody a hug and then they don't uh, suffer any damage. That's just not how that goes. What do you mean? When they, like, hug <laughs> the two survivors. I mean, they are smushing them together. Yeah, I think the point was they were, like, body. locking the fire with their bodies. It's not great. Oh, yeah, no, I get that, but uh, that's not how explosions work. Right. <laughs> I don't know, it is. I mean, if, if it explodes and it gets stuck in someone else's body in, in front of you and it doesn't hit you... I mean, shockwaves travel through regardless. Yeah, shockwaves can, but not shrapnel. Sure. Also, heat. I mean, you're not going to be able to make an airtight human bubble. You don't, you don't need it to be an airtight. No, yeah, they still should have had, like, burns. You definitely do if there's an yeah. inferno. They definitely should have been more fucked up, no doubt, but I don't think it's impractical to think that there's, like, six people surrounding them or whatever. Wasn't there's two. There yeah. was two. <laughs> but still... I don't think it's improbable to think that they didn't live, etc. I mean, I don't think that that ruins the movie. I think it's right. improbable that it would be whatever outside, but that was kind of the point of the movie is that there is life outside of the train. Also, the fact that, like, look, you think that you can go out, chill. That's cool. I'm into it. You want to blow up the train, all that's left of humanity, because you believe that, even though there's a bunch of evidence to the contrary? Pretty crazy. I mean, that's what why he d isn't a leader. He doesn't want to be a leader. He wasn't the one who made the decision. Oh, yeah, he was, was, he was definitely was the engineer. He was never going to become the successor of a. Uh, what Wolf. are you talking about? This is not what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, he's talking about Namgun, the engineer. Oh yeah, yeah. but who blows up the train? Does he actually want to blow up the train or does he just want to blow up the uh, exit and then it becomes like, oh, fuck, we need to go now. And they're going to kill us, so fuck it. Well, I guess you can say that if the door was shut, the train wouldn't blow up, but I think that that would be a pretty wild it assumption. It still would have blown seems up the engine power. capsule and derailed yeah, it. So That's what I was about to say. I was like, seems like a wild assumption seeming as... All they're trying to do is blow up the door, though, right? Then he had way too much drugs. <laughs> that was a, it was a big... I mean, that, that's always been a thing. <laughs> the entire yeah, movie. He's going for an hour yeah. now. Which the guy's a security specialist. He's not an explosive specialist. Are we talking too much about it? Yeah, no. It had some fun stuff. It was There was some good to it. Honestly, I just didn't like it as much as... Uh, Tenet, even. But I just I didn't, I didn't enjoy myself watching the movie. There were some things that I was like, oh, this is a good idea. I thought all of the ideas in the movie were good. Like, all the themes and kind of laid out were cool. But I think it fell flat so many ways that leads me to a four. Okay. All right. Anyway, in summary, nice. <laughs> yeah, that's what I think. Such a good line. I fucking... <laughs> it's so just yeah. strange and wonderful. Um, but yeah, uh, second episode, our still unnamed movie podcast. Um, I mean, it's, it's just I, kind of, 
Mm-hmm. Hey. I mean, counterpoints is us. We we counterpoint. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I have some ideas for uh, for the movies. Actually, one of you guys mentioned um, uh, dialogue in particular, like the dialogue feeling real. Um, I have a movie in that vein that, yeah. that we could watch. Um, have you guys seen her? In what? Her. I've seen a little bit of it. I didn't watch. No, I haven't seen it. Oh, but can we do that one next? We can have a suggestion. We can have. We can talk. But about all I'm going to think about is Just, his upside are we down now? Are we done with this Okay. Um. Yeah. Thanks for listening. See you next time. Bye. <laughs>